Hi everybody, I'm Lisa Young Sutton and welcome to my channel. I've got an interesting spread to share with you today using the Grand Jeu Lenormand, uh, also known as the Astro Mythological. That's this deck here. There it is. So you can see it's it's got two different scenes on the box, but they are just two different names for the same chord system. Okay. Now I am in the process of learning this amazing French card system and just as I did with the Petit Lenormand, I am letting the cards themselves teach me by asking all sorts of questions. Now for now I am sticking with three card lines just as I did with the Petit Lenormand because I think more than that um, would just confuse me more than teach me anything or I would get too frustrated and I would just scrap the whole project. So I am for now sticking with three card lines. Um, and I chose a question that I thought many card readers would benefit from or would enjoy because I did intend to make a video from this, um, from this reading. Now the question I asked is, as card readers, what most commonly blocks our ability to accurately, accurately receive messages from higher intelligence through the cards? Again, let me, let me say that again. As card readers, what most commonly blocks our ability to accurately receive messages from higher intelligence through the cards? Now, to recap the position meanings that I use, there are more than uh, there are more ways to to uh, lay a three card line, but the primary meanings I assign to the positions are the center card represents the seeker and the question as well as the overall answer. The left side card represents outside influences or external forces acting on the situation. And the right side card represents attitudes and possible actions to take. So the first thing I do is I take note of what groups the cards belong to. And I immediately notice that I have two cards from the Hermetic Knowledge Group. And that's exactly what I'm asking about how to re receive divine wisdom. And that's what Hermeticism is all about. So let's take a look at these cards. Now I also want to point out that you can garner extra information from the various elements contained within these cards, but your main focus is on the scenes depicted. Each card has three scenes. You have one large central scene, and then you have two small ones down here right? But when I say other elements, I'm talking about the fact that we have a cardamantic meaning, we have a constellation meaning, we have a letter meaning, um, we have on many cards, all three of these, but they don't all contain it, uh, we have a geomantic meaning and we have a flower meaning. So what you can do is you can use those other elements uh, to give you more ideas or more keywords to work into your readings, but they're not mandatory, so don't worry about them. All right, so our central card, our main card is the Four of Clubs, and the broad meaning as it relates to our question is, you're at risk of becoming a slave to the material world where efforts are made to reason everything. In other words, you're left brain dominant and ruled by your physical senses, but it's not too late to allow esoteric knowledge in, right? So getting a little more specific, this card warns against getting carried away by the very act of card reading. Are you too focused on what the cards are supposed to mean and not allowing them to speak to you in a unique way for each individual reading? Or are you subject to the whims of the person you're reading for and trying to tell them what they want to hear? Ooh, yes. Um, now th that places you in a position of weakness, which hinders your freedom to interpret the cards. Another possibility is, are you being swayed by your own whims, affected by your current moods and vacillating between confidence and uncertainty or indecisiveness? This card relates to all of that. So looking at the small images now, down here, and what does this look like? Small image left here, it's you, it's the card reader. 
right? Now this image relates to doing the right thing regardless of what the client wants to hear. It's about sticking to your principles and acting in a wise and discreet manner. Remember that your client is coming to you for help. We all need help sometimes, <clears throat> excuse me. So show empathy and compassion, but don't sugarcoat your message in an attempt to appease them. All right. There's also a warning here against being arrogant or condescending. Now, if we bring this back to the question of how to connect to higher intelligence, remember that all the things being warned against involve low frequency thinking, which blocks the high vibration of higher intelligence. On the other side, we have the opposite situation here. Uh, you lack sincerity and integrity and in attempt to make a quick buck or show off um, or impress your client. You can see she's, she's, she's like, uh, like belittled herself. She's supposed to be like a, I don't know if she's supposed to be a prostitute or what, but you know, here she is. She's, um, she's got her hand out right away. Like, I don't even think she's done anything yet. And she's like, yeah, just, just give me some money. That's all I care about. So it's that, that kind of meaning, right? So, um, you know, in this scenario, you don't really care about your client other than what you can get from them or how they can make you feel right now, right? So let's look at the other hermetic knowledge card, the seven of hearts. Now this fell in the outside influences position. The overall theme of this card is fluctuating emotional states. Hmm. The little joys and disappointments in life brought about by the people that come and go and life's constant cycle of good and bad news. As an outside influence, this is something we can't control. Yes? It's also the card of messages, visits, and meetings. And as an outside force, I'm looking at it as the reactions we get from the client and their feedback. Right? Now, we are primarily looking at this small image right down here which refers to one who receives pleasant news or positive answers to their questions. And if we follow the advice of the four of clubs and act with integrity and sincerity, this should be the ultimate outcome. But this can't be our primary goal. If it is, we're at risk of sugarcoating everything we see in order to placate the client or to make ourselves feel good by receiving, you know, positive feedback right away. All right, so now let's look at the other side, the four of diamonds. And remember that this is in the attitude and actions position. And the four of diamonds is from the golden fleece group, which relates to business and trade. Now, within the context of our question, this would refer to exchanges with others and transactions or interactions intended to, intended to add value to our lives or to add value to their lives, right? So the broad meaning of this card is that you're supported and protected by one who cares and loves you, okay? Now, when we read with integrity and compassion, with a sincere desire to help the seeker, we're always supported and protected by universal forces or cosmic energies, right? So we're going to focus on the small image left, which represents doubts and fears. The message is that this attitude is never beneficial. Confidence is essential to receiving the right messages. That's the meaning of this little image down here. And it won't always be easy, and you'll sometimes need to put in extra effort to understand what you're receiving. You also must make the effort to understand your client. Doing so will dispel any doubt, doubts and fears that they may have, right? So we want to pair that with this small image right of our center card, which warns against operating from a place of insincerity and without integrity in an attempt to make a quick buck or impress another with your talents, right? So what this pairing is saying to me is that if we act without integrity, it will be like facing an angry bull with no helmet on, if you notice, he's got his helmet on over here. Here, he, his helmet fell off, right? And he, all he has is like um, 
I, I forget, somebody said, it's just a bottle of water. <laughs> and I thought, you know, that kind of fits, right? It's, it's kind of like you're facing an angry bull with, with no helmet on and just a bottle of water in your hand. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and that's what happens if you um, read cards without integrity, you know, and without sincerity. Yeah, so when we act from a place of low vibration, we will feel alone and unsupported and unprotected. And that's exactly what this little scene here is, is uh, conveying, right? So I think it's important to set an intention to only see the truth and fearlessly pass it on for the highest good of the client, regardless of how they feel about you. Remember the phrase, don't shoot the messenger. And as a card reader, you're simply the messenger. You're the medium between the infinite intelligence of the cosmic mind and the person you drew the cards for. So stay in that place and, and you will never go wrong. Wow. Okay, well, that's it for today, my friends. I hope you found that interesting and enlightening. Thanks, as always, for watching. And I will see you in my Facebook group, Lisa Loves Lenormand, Traditional Petite and Grand Jeu Lenormand and in the next video. Bye for now.